to initiate release sequencer. On my mark. Five. We're on express elevator to hell. Going down. Two. One. Mark. Hello, everyone. My name is Mark, a.k.a. Derringer. Today is Monday, August 5th, and you are listening to episode 220 of the Instant Action Podcast, your weekly source for planetside news and information. As always, I'm brought to you by great listeners like you via the Support the Show tab on instantactionpodcast.com. So first up, I have to apologize to everybody. I'm sure most of you saw my tweet or the post on Reddit apologizing for not putting a show out, uh, I guess, today, this morning, like I normally do. Uh, migraine absolutely destroyed me yesterday. I, 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 it was the point where I couldn't even think straight uh, to all the people that have reached out to me empathizing because they suffer from migraines. Yeah, we... Sometimes they just are some of the worst migraines you've ever gotten in your life where you just need to crawl into bed, put your head under a pillow. For me, I have to block out all light. I have to block out all sound. And then it, the weird part for me is I always get one song or like a, a refrain of some song stuck in my head on constant repeat. For me, yesterday it was... 21 Pilots, Guns for Hands. I don't know if you've heard that song or not, but th there's a, a line in it where they say, I'm trying, I'm trying to sleep, I'm trying, I'm trying to sleep, but I can't, but I can't when you all have guns for hands. And again, for me, I get one song and just one small part of the song, and it plays over and over and over again in my mind when I have a migraine. I, I can't explain it. I'm just wired oddly, but... You know, the light sensitivity, the sound sensitivity, and getting a song playing over and over in my head as my head is pounding. That's my migraine world. Uh, but the good news is I don't get them very often anymore. I, I, I was telling someone on Reddit today that I used to get them a lot in high school, a lot in college, uh, and a lot in my 20s and 30s. And then I got diagnosed with high blood pressure. And because, well... You know, guys, we don't go to the doctor for and forever. Well, I don't think I went uh, from age 18 to 30-something. So, because uh, that's just standard, I guess. And so who knows how long I'd had high blood pressure. But then when I finally got diagnosed with it and got put on medication for it, my migraines pretty much instantly disappeared. You know, I'd get a couple a week. Uh, of those debilitating ones, like I talked about, you know, they and they'd come and go. You'd get a few, like a couple weeks in a row, I'd get a whole bunch of them, and then I wouldn't get them for a little while, and then they'd come back. And clearly, it was all triggered by high blood pressure. Once I've gotten that under control, the amount of migraines I get are just so few now that I will never come off my high blood pressure medication, regardless of whether. Uh, I, of, of what my actual blood pressure is because right now my blood pressure is perfect um, it's probably medication driven at this point but again I'm never coming off of it because the side effect for me is that it's pretty much cured my migraines but that's kind of the state that I was in yesterday and why I didn't record yesterday so I certainly apologize for that uh, but I wouldn't go a week without recording unless there was some sort of natural disaster stopping me from doing that. So uh, here I am back to talk about the Instant Action Podcast and Planet Side. So what's in store for this week's show? Well, first, there is a PC hotfix to talk about. Yes, no PS4 game update, but the good news is Nick did tweet that we should expect the PS4 game update this week, most likely this Thursday. Uh, I believe that is the 8th. Let me check my calendar here real quick. Yeah, Thursday, August 8th is most likely, either the 8th or 9th is going to be the day that we should see a PS4 game update. And obviously, once that drops, I will talk about it and cover the whole thing. Uh, after the PC hotfix, though, uh, there is some good recursion stat tracker news to share. And this is actually a bonus to not recording yesterday because this news came out late last night. And if I recorded yesterday, I wouldn't be able to talk about this one. Uh, and then after that, it's back to game news because in addition to the PC hotfix, there was also a PTS game update with some changes to the aerial anomaly and some other stuff in it. 
And then I'm going to finish up this week with an engineering topic, because you guys know I'm engineer main. Uh, it's an analysis about how not to be one shot by snipers in a mana turret. Uh, so hopefully you other engineers out there like me will enjoy that. So strap in as we hot drop into another episode of the Instant Action Podcast. So first up, like I said, that August 2nd PC hotfix, and uh, I think technically the PTS update dropped first, and then the PC hotfix dropped, because a lot of the stuff that's in this hotfix also hit the PTS at the exact same time, so... I guess technically I'm doing them out of order, but I'm going to talk about the stuff that's on live first. So the two high priority fixes that are on live is tank mines and C4 should now correctly despawn when detonated. Uh, and they've made additional changes that should clean up NPCs more quickly and efficiently. Yes, tank mines and C4 are considered NPCs in Planet Side 2. Also, the maximum pressure continent event will now correctly grant rewards to all participants. Uh, that was a large, well, not a large, that was a complaint of mine after the few maximum pressure events that I've been part of. I have not been in the winning side on any of them, so I've not gotten any rewards for them. So glad to see that that has been fixed uh, on live as well. Moving on from those high priorities, there were a bunch of other miscellaneous changes, fixes, and additions, and those are as follows. First, there were a couple mentor changes, starting with mentor rating decay was reduced to 12 per 24 hours, and that's cut in half because it used to be 24 per 24 hours. Uh, and the rating lost at login is now capped at 100. So you can never lose more than 100 uh, when you're logged out. Uh, also, the mentor rating per ribbon earned was increased fr from one to three. So you get three times as many rent mentor rating for every ribbon that you earn. So that should be a give some of you the chance to rank up a little bit more quickly with your mentor rating. Uh, and then you won't lose as much uh, when you're not playing the game. So ba basically at this point, if you're going to lose 12 every 24 hours, that means that you can go at least uh, at least 10 days, uh, not even 10 days, my math is off. Let's see, you can go at least eight and a third days before you are going to lose 100. So uh, again, once you've gone past eight and a third days, I know it's 8.3 repeating. Uh, thank you, Leroy Jenkins. Uh, if you uh, go past that, just know you're not going to lose more than that 100 cap, which, uh, like I said, it's going to give people that go on vacation or something like that, uh, they're not going to get completely screwed and come back to having no mentor rating, like if they're on a two-week vacation or something like that. Moving on from mentor rating, though, the NSO Gal uh, Valkyrie VLG no longer has a 1.5 second reload time. Instead, the intended two seconds while it's unscoped. I know that was something a lot of people were crying for. Uh, there was an animation fix for the NS45 Pilots magazine reload. There was an animation fix for the charging handle on the NSX Tonto's long reload. Uh, and there was an animation fix for the NSX Tengu's reload port while firing. Uh, most of you probably didn't even know there was a problem with them. Those have been fixed. Uh, they allowed standard cockpit glass to be unlocked for NSO characters now. Yay. Uh, a big one, though. Summer support ribbon earn rates now should be in line with that of a standard repair ribbon. So uh, we shouldn't be earning as many summer support ribbons as we currently were. Uh, I mean, you used to get them like freaking candy uh, so fast. It's going to be a little bit slower now. Uh, moving on to flaming skull helmets and other helmets using particle effects are now attaching those correctly, and I'm assuming that's uh, probably to help with rendering and stuff like that and FPS for people. And then finally, solid wa walls are now properly repaired by the repair module. I know that was a, a bug that was ongoing where solid walls weren't being repaired properly. So... There's your entire game update. It wasn't in, in a update. Game update is the wrong word for it. A hot fix, you know, just a couple quick bug fixes and stuff like that. Really, the big stuff is tank mines and C4. Now, when you're in game, you won't be stupid like me 
and seeing tank mines everywhere and trying to shoot them to blow them up and realize that they're not there. Uh, so those should all be despawned. And that maximum pressure granting rewards to everybody uh, is a good change on this as well. But again, that's the entire hotfix. So let's move on to some recursion news that I think many people will be happy about. All right. Now, like I said at the beginning, uh, good recursion news. And again, I'm glad that uh, in one sense, I'm happy that I didn't record yesterday because if I had, this news would have been out there for an entire week before I talk about it. And it would be completely overshadowed with the most likely PS4 game update that should be dropping this week. So uh, a good news that I decided not to record last night so that we could talk about recursion because... The good news is that there is a DirectX 11 update out right now for the recursion real-time stat tracker. And Exploding Fist posted on Reddit yesterday that, uh, and I'll, I'll think I'll just read most of it for you so you guys can get uh, the, the, the words exactly from Exploding Fist himself. And before I even go into this, a huge thank you to Exploding Fist for continuing to work on this. Uh, Silencer as well. Radlock also. Uh, you guys have created something that is very awesome in game. And I wish I even had a third of the or even a tenth of the skills that you guys did to create something like this in game. Because I'm always in awe every time I was using the real time stat tracker. And I didn't realize until it was gone how much of a big part of my gaming sessions this was and not being able to use it. Uh, so the good news is they have a DirectX version of this in the works right now, uh, even more so than the works right now. Um, what uh, Iron, what Exploding Fist wrote is that, I almost called him Iron Fist, uh, that would kind of be uh, an insult if anybody watched the most recent uh version of that on Netflix because it was awful. Uh, so Exploding Fist wrote that uh, they didn't have time to sink in the, they didn't have time to put into it. Uh, they had some other people that were going to be working on it, but that never solidified. Uh, but he, Silencer, and Radlock were going to be spending a week together in Vegas. And he happened to mention to Silencer in passing that if Silencer was able to port the overlay over to DirectX 11, that Exploding Fist would cover his alcohol for the entire week and ensure that he never went thirsty. And in less than a week, they had a semi-working pro prototype, which really goes to show you that Silencer loves alcohol, <laughs> if anything. Uh, and he said that yesterday they got a fully working DirectX overlay up and running. Now, there will be bugs in it. Just be aware of that. It's uh, it's in the game and working, but it's not a final polished version yet. Uh, he says it's working much better and more consistently than, they, than it did with the old DirectX 9 version, uh, and this is something to do with hooking into the client itself. If you want to use this, and I know a lot of the people that I know are already out there using this, you can opt into the beta branch of the tracker. And if you want to do that, first you need to close PlanetSide 2. Do not have PlanetSide 2 running when you launch the recursion stat tracker. But once you have the stat tracker up and running, you're going to, going to go to the tools screen. You're going to go to the options screen under tools. You're going to select beta participation. Once you've selected that, you're going to go to help and then cl click on to update, and then click on check for update. Uh, he says, or just restart the software. So uh, I have not updated my recursion tracker yet, so why don't I launch this bad boy right now, and we'll we'll do this live on screen for you guys right now. So uh, like he says, go into the tools, tools, options, click on options, and then there's an option to check off beta participation. I check off beta participation. Uh, I'm going to hit apply, uh, and then I'm going to save that, and then I'm going to go to help, uh, and then I'm going to click on update, uh, and there it goes. It's installing, and it's friggin' already done. 
<laughs> That's how fast. Oh, it says pending install. So it's going to be installing while I continue to talk about this. So he to, to go on further, he says that they've had a whole bunch of recursion members running alpha tests successfully over the past few days, but they do know that there are some bugs uh, that you could be encountering. Oh, he does say click check for update. So a click check for update. And oh, I already clicked. Uh, then it says to restart your software. So let me just finish that. So I'm going to exit that, relaunch the recursion tracker. But while I'm doing that, he says there are going to be bugs. If you do run into any issues, he says to report them on their forums. And if you don't know where their forums are, you can actually go to either click the help button within the tracker and there's an option for forums, but you can go to recursion.tk. Uh, and that's where the forums are as well. And you can type in all your questions or bug reports there. Uh, he does say that if the issues are game breaking for you, that you can unselect the beta participation and then update again. Uh, and then it will obviously no longer work for you and you won't have the, uh, the overlay itself. But that's really the way you're going to get out of bugs if they're game breaking currently. Now, he did say that it's worth noting uh, NSOs are not properly tracked. Uh, they do think that it's something they can't fix currently, and that's because the API doesn't have the information yet to let them know which faction the NSO characters are playing for. Uh, their hope is that in the future the API gets augmented, aug augmented with that information, uh, and then once that happens, they can make the changes required to support that properly. So use it on NSO characters at your own risk because it's probably going to say that you're team killing other NSOs even though they're on different factions but that, that's just my guess from it but ultimately they're happy that this is out there I think the community as a whole is happy that it's out there I'm happy that it's out there I can't wait to start using it again in game uh, now I've got it reloaded so let me just check my uh, help update it still says pen in progress pending install so uh, I guess I'll just let this go. I'll leave this alone while it's receiving the actual beta update and then try to play with it later uh, when I go. But again, if you love the recursion stat tracker like I did and were dying to use it under DirectX 11, it is now out there. Uh, launch your recursion tracker, opt into the beta participation, update it, and get in there and use it. And report it, and more importantly, report any bugs because we're going to help uh, Iron Fist. I called him Iron Fist. Exploding Fist. You know, Iron Fist yell. At, Exploding Fist yell at me all you want for calling you Iron Fist because that's just awful. Uh, submit these bugs for Exploding Fist Silencer and Radlock so they can track these things down and clear them all out. Uh, and we'll get exactly what we want in game itself. So if I didn't say it already, Exploding Fist Silencer Radlock. Thank you for updating this and getting this back into our hands. But with that, let's move on to the third topic this week, the PTS update. So the third topic this week was the August 2nd PTS update. And like I said, uh, this dropped before the game update and some of the things within this uh, PTS up update that also came to live. Uh, it was those two high priority fixes. Grant, they hit the test server first, but immediately went to live. Uh, also, things like the mentor rating changes, the uh, Valkyrie VLG changes, the animation fixes, the cockpit glass, the support ribbons, the flaming skull helmets, and other particle effects, and also the solid walls. Those are all in this PTS update as well. But again, they've already made it to live, uh, so I'm not going to talk about them again on uh, this section of the show. But the big news in this game, in, in this PTS update, is that the new aerial anomalies were released. And I didn't even realize that they were redoing the aerial anomalies. Uh, and so I'm a little intrigued. Uh, unfortunately, I missed the playtests for them. Uh, they did announce a full public playtest uh, on this uh, at 2 p.m. Pacific when it dropped on this on August 2nd, and uh, August 2nd was the Friday. I don't even remember what I was doing on August 2nd, but I couldn't make the make it for this. 
because I had something else going on. So I missed out on this pe- on this play test, and I wanted to try out these new anomalies. But I'm sure you're asking, you know, enough about you, Derringer. What w- is the new aerial anomaly? So they've restructured the event in order to encourage more active participation and offer a little more tactical depth in their minds at least. So in the new version, data buoys are going to appear in the center of the map and the anomalies themselves will coat vehicles in a mysterious residue called Tempest. And then what you need to do is deliver Tempest from anomalies to the nearby data buoys in order to score points. Now, galaxies are allowed to carry up to 1,000 Tempest. Liberators can carry 500 Tempest. Valkyries can carry 500 Tempest. And ESFs can carry up to 100 Tempest. Now, any spotted vehicles that are carrying Tempest display a special icon that changes based on how much Tempest has been gathered by them. And if you kill a target that is carrying Tempest, all of those resources are lost. Obviously, the team with the most Tempest, once it's over, uh, wins the entire event. Uh, And in a later update, they're going to add experience for depositing Tempest. uh, And they'll also be messaging buoy locations better. So, obviously, the current aerial anomaly that's on live, it's just... You fly to the anomaly, you sit in the anomaly, and whoever's there longest gets the most points. Obviously, right now, they're very one-sided. Usually one faction gets all the points and runs away with it, and the other two factions really don't do much about it. So I'm very excited to see a change coming to the aerial anomalies, and I think this might be different, because uh, different in a good way. Because now, what this is going to do is it's going to give a nice little niche for pilots who want to shoot down Galaxies, Liberators, Valkyries, and ESFs that are carrying Tempest. And I can already see in my mind little Tempest hunting groups, and I imagine that's going to be, you know, put up in the squad, you know, finder tool where people are saying hunting Tempest or something like that. And uh, I think that there's going to be some skilled pilots in the game doing what they do best and shooting down the enemy to deny them Tempest gains. So I'm curious to see how this will work once it actually comes to live and if that comes to fruition. What this also does that I like is that it forces players to fly to the uh, anomalies and then also fly to data buoys rather than just moving to one location and sitting there pretty much doing nothing while you tick points inside the aerial anomaly. So uh, I kind of like this change. I wish I had played on the PTS. If there's a next one out, I'm definitely going to try it before this actually comes to live. Uh, But hopefully you guys will look out for it as well. Obviously, if Planetside 2 tweets it, I will retweet it so everybody knows about it. Moving on to vehicles, they've made a new Vanguard defensive slot and thrown it out on the PTS, and this is called the Nimitz Reactor. And what this does, it replaces the 1,000 Vanguard health in exchange for a quick recharging shield layer of the same value. And it also recharges 100 shield health per second at all ranks. At rank 1, the recharge delay of 6 seconds when damage is received uh, and 15 seconds when the shield is fully broken. If you bump it up to rank 2, it's still 6 seconds, but 12 seconds when broken. Shield 3, 6 seconds but 11 seconds when broken, and then finally rank 4, still a delay of 6 seconds when damage is received, and 10 seconds when the shield is fully broken. So a little change on a Vanguard defensive slot. Um, but I'd need to play around with it to kind of have more of an opinion on this at this time. Then there were some other miscellaneous changes fixed in addition. They've been working on continent rotation being randomized at server startup, uh, and I think this is a direct response to the issues over on Connery where they complained that we were fighting on Esimir nonstop, and I experienced that every time I'd log in and go play on Connery. It was always Esimir until Drew went in and manually changed it to something different, so glad that they're playing around with that. They've also had warp gate rotations randomized on server startups as well. They also changed it so alerts and continent events will now end prior to a server restart again this is another one many players were complaining that a server restart would pop up right in the middle of an alert and then everybody wouldn't get any rewards from it so this is obviously the smart way to handle that i hope that comes to live sooner rather than later 
Also on the PTS, personal shields have a new visual effects. Note that it's still a work in progress. Basically, the Vanu character has kind of like a teal uh, personal shield when you shoot it. The TR has a red and the NC has a blue. It's kind of a neat little effect. Uh, I'd like to see that uh, come to live as well, even though they say it's still a work in prox process. And they also fix some other issues related to the impact effects when shooting targets with a shield layer itself. Uh, and again, this was all in, in addition to the stuff that I said has already come to live as well. So there's your entire PTS update uh, all together. Um, I will definitely be looking out for the next Aerial Anomaly PTS playtest because I'd like to check it out before it comes to live. But with that, let's move on to our fourth and final topic this week. So for that fourth topic, there was a question on Reddit asking, will you survive a sniper headshot if you're on a mana turret and your implants are Robotics Tech 5 and Jockey 5? So first, let's talk about what are Robotics Tech and Jockey. So as always, I go right to Iridar's, uh, Iridar.net and look up the implants. Uh, basically, uh, for Robot Tech... Your non-mine deployables within 15 meters of you receive 10, 13, 18, or 25% damage resistance. Engineers using the turret also receive this damage reduction. Uh, if you're at rank 5, also affected deployables will also automatically repair themselves for 25 health per second. But the real big thing here is... Uh, the question is asking, you're getting a 25% damage resistance as the engineer uh, with a rank five, uh, five, four or five robotics technician. And so the other question is, what is the jockey implant? And when we look up the jockey implant, the jockey is while riding in an exposed vehicle seat or using a mana turret, you receive an additional 30, 33, 40, or 50% maximum shield health. In addition, at rank 5, squad mates and vehicles within 50 meters of you also receive this benefit at 20% shield strength. Note that the rank 5 doesn't really seem to affect the engineer as well. So, of course, the question here is, and, and the first thing that when you're reading this is, do you really need Jockey to be at rank 5? Uh, or is it more important to make sure that you have robotics tech at rank five? So the good news is Anu Erebus, who I've quoted before on the podcast, was quick to jump out and give some information about this. So uh, if you are a engineer main like I am for the most part, the good news is with Anu Erebus doing his math, he see, says that you don't need them all the way to all the way to rank five. In fact, you can potentially survive a headshot against the lowest damage bolt actions, even with Jockey 1, as long as you have at least Robotics Technician of 4. So to pull this out, he first took up the max damage of sniper rifles with headshots. The, most, the ones doing the most damage are either the Directive Reward sniper rifles or the NC's Railjack, and those are doing 1,575 damage on a headshot. Now... He also goes on for the Tier 3 sniper rifles with a headshot. This is your long shot, your parallax, your rams, uh, or your close quarters combat ones, your sasser, your ghost, and your TSAR. Uh, they're going to be doing 1,470 damage. Then your Tier 1, this is your bolt driver, your XM98, your M77B, and your Tier 2, your LA80, your V10, and your SR7s are doing 1,365 damage on a headshot. So if you have Robotics Tech 4 or 5, which is giving you a 25% reduction, it means that the directive weapons of the Railjack are going to do 1,181 damage. Uh, tier 3s and close quarters combats are going to do 1102, and the tiers 1 and 2 are going to do 1023.75. Um, that's if you've got robotics at rank 4. Now, the jockey bonus gives you a bonus of 150 at rank 1, 165 at 2, 200 at rank 3, and 250 for rank 4. So if you take a standard engineer who has 500 shields and 500 health, you basically need rank 3 of jockey in addition to rank 4 of robotics tech 
to survive a headshot from the directive rewards and the railjack. Now, if you're fighting against somebody who is not using a directive reward or the railjack, which I think that's mostly non-NC players and uh, stuff like that, um, you can actually get away with using just robotics rank four and a jockey of rank one because that's enough to take care of the damage incoming from the tier threes cqcs and the tiers one and two so basically that's your answer the first thing you want to do is get robotics tech up to four and then you want to get at least jockey to rank one to survive most norm most uh, sniper rifle headshot hits but if you want to be able to survive all of them you need to get jockey to at least rank three so clearly robotics tech is the most important one and again robotics tech uh, just by itself well you need at least jockey rank one so if you've just got uh, if you just unlock jockey and gotten your robotics tech up to rank four you're doing pretty well inside your mana turret and you're not going to get shot uh, you're not going to get killed by probably the majority of the snipers out there so not bad but you do also and Anna Rubis also says this you need to be mindful that some of these margins are really slim and any small bits of damage that you've taken from some other source really make or break your chances of survival and he says that positioning is a much bigger factor than raw health when it comes to survival inside a mana turret and he says you should always be trying to put yourself above your opponents and abusing the hitbox of the turrets, which can often make shooting through that gap pretty close to impossible. So uh, this is a question that I've, I've always wondered, and I'm happy that uh, Anu Arubas did the math for this. And I know a lot of other engineers out there are happy that he did, he did the math for this as well. So Anu Arubas, if you're listening to this, thank you. I can't thank you enough. With that, let's move on to housekeeping this week. Housekeeping. Housekeeping. Come back later, please. Housekeeping. Not now. Housekeeping. Go away. I coming anyway. So no emails, no voicemails this week. That's okay. How can you get in touch with me or the show itself? Well, first visit my website, www.instantactionpodcast.com. You can email me at instantactionshow at gmail.com. Any questions, comments, feel free to email whatever you want. I'll read it and respond. You can also call me at 347-4VM4PS2. Those digits are 347-486-4772. You can join the ranks of the uh, spam callers that are hitting that number every day. Uh, and you can also follow the show on Twitter, which is at Instact Podcast. But in closing, if you've enjoyed the show, please leave me a review on your podcast listening avenue of choice, whether it's iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or anywhere else. Also, feel free to tell your friends and outfit mates about the show. But finally, thanks for listening, and keep spamming that Join Combat, formerly known as Instant Action Button. Derringer out.
Session started.